a lot of people that have been with us for a long time. So if you have questions, if you're if you're just getting here, you know, I, I sit here and I watch the attendees come piling in uh, right at the last minute. And I know some of them aren't going to hear this. But maybe you guys that have been around for a while uh, and have been to a number of these can help them, can help answer questions for people that are going to be typing in questions based on whatever it is I'm talking about, not knowing that I'm not reading the, the questions. I'm, I'm actually going to be uh, uh, proceeding with the presentation and not stopping for questions right now. We're going to take today, we're going to take a few minutes for questions at the end, but not too long because most of what uh, your questions will, will be covered on Saturday. We have another event this Saturday um, to address most of your questions after what we talk about today, okay? Um, this is a brand new presentation. Many of you haven't seen it before. Uh, some brand new information. Uh, that I hope that you got brand new to our uh, our usual visitors here that listen to our our events. So uh, hopefully you'll find it very interesting. Before we get started, where's everybody from? Where are you guys from? I know you're from Sweden, Alex. Alex is one of our guys. Well, our regulars, or he was a regular, and now he's coming back. Same with Heinz and Peter and Lynn, Bob, Bob, Bob R. Hmm. Not not sure I'm familiar. Who are you again? <laughs> Bob's been trading with us or or with our uh, with our software and been also helpful indirectly in the development of a lot of our software just by offering suggestions. Um, he's been around for with us for how long, Bob? Four years. Yeah, I thought. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, and I'm just talking here for a couple of minutes waiting for, um, I can sit here and I can see the attendees coming in and they're starting to come in real fast. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody gets here before we get started. Um, had a, a, a conversation with a guy yesterday and, you know, he's doing the right thing and he's doing his due diligence and he's making sure that he's doing business with a reputable company. And I said, you know, we've got, you know, don't ask me if I'm reputable. Reputable. Ask somebody who experiences our products, our services, um, has been, you know, dealing with us for a while. Ask them, and we'll give you their names. And and Bob has been gracious enough to answer questions for a lot of people because Bob's been around here for a long time. And and I gotta believe that. Bob's not stupid, and if this wasn't working for him, or at least we didn't have anything of value to offer, he probably wouldn't hang around very long. Oh, yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, we need to talk. All right, well, looks like we're from all over the world. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, remember, those of you that just came in, um, I don't read the chat. I will not answer questions. But we have a whole bunch of our traders here with us that are happy to answer questions for you. Uh, Connor is here, um, and he'll answer questions for you. If you have something specific for me, just wait till the end. And... Uh, I'll answer your questions if they're directed to me, okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. That being said, thank you, Bob. 
So we're going to talk about, you know, the other side of momentum. There's a lot of momentum is a very interesting topic if you decide to sit down and study it because momentum on the surface seems very straightforward and typical. And, there, and when you talk about momentum in trading, it can actually mean different things. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, momentum trading and how the other side of momentum plays in to the markets today and where there might be some opportunities for us. There's a, um, a trader that's been very successful. He's actually a, uh, uh, a fund manager. His name is Richard Driehaus. And uh, he coined this this phrase, you know, you've all, you've all heard, you know, buy low, sell high. And uh, he coined this phrase, uh, you know, buy high and sell even higher. Okay. And he ran a fund. Uh, uh, I don't think, I don't know if he's still running the fund, but uh, for a long time. And that was his strategy. And he was reporting returns of uh, about 30% for Driehaus Capital um, in, in back in the 80s and 90s, I think. Uh, again, I don't know what he, what he's doing nowadays. He's, I think he's in his early 70s, so he may still be trading. I'm not sure. But he, he didn't invent the whole idea of buy high, sell higher. But... He kind of he was the first one to implement it in a strategy in today's markets. Okay, um, and so what that means is that the uh, you know this is this is what's called momentum investing, and this is where the the trader has stop has has confidence that this whatever the asset is can lead to a higher high or a lower low. Okay, and that's going to be because of the immovable, unstoppable um, momentums of the market. Okay, there are momentums in the market that are undeniable. Okay, and we're going to look at, at some of that. Okay, first, uh, got to get the legal stuff out of the way. I'll give you... Um, 15 seconds to read all this. Okay, you got it? If you didn't, hopefully you're watching it on video. You can just uh, pause it right here. Okay, a little bit about me before we get started so you know who the heck you're, you're uh, listening to. I, I started my trading career pretty much like the rest of you. I had a, an everyday job. I was a remodeling contractor, did really well at that for, for a long time. Um, as, as part of the remodeling business, I added a couple of hot tub stores. Um, and I was by far, even though there, I'm not sure there's an award for this, but I, if there was, I would win it. Or would have won it the absolute world's worst trader because I did everything wrong it seemed like every decision I made was a bad one every trade I put on was the wrong one all the information I had that I thought was so valuable ended up just destroying multiple trading accounts so ultimately I had an aha moment, and we will uh, we talk about those in uh, our VIP presentations that I do every Wednesday. Uh, it's interesting that one aha kind of leads to another, leads to another. It, it it opens doors. So I had this big moment, and that turned into multiple big moments. And since then, I've been able to uh, strip away the contractor part of of my uh, existence I'm, I, I call myself a reformed com, uh, uh, contractor we developed a trading system and indicators for that trading system uh, and so that's what I spend my time doing and and really enjoy doing after 
I finally managed to turn the corner based on a few epiphanies that I had. Okay. Um, while I have you here and I have your attention, uh, we have an event this Saturday. We're going to go through a lot of information today. And I'm going to show you this again later. Um, but we're going to go through a lot of information today. We have an event this Saturday. If you registered for this event, you're already registered for Saturday. If you're not registered for this event, but you're watching it on video, over here, you'll see an email address. Send us an email, and we'll get you registered for the event uh, this Saturday, okay? After the event today, you're going to be asking yourself, well, what are these indicators? What do they do, and how can, I be, how, how can they be used? You're also going to be, at the end of today, going, oh, my gosh, that rock star looks really cool. How do you trade it? Okay, I'm going to answer all of that on Saturday. And then on Saturday, on t t t uh, today I don't have a whole lot of time to answer very many questions when we get to the end. On Saturday, I'll take all day to answer questions, okay? So we're going to look at, you know, in order to understand momentum trading, we need to look at everything that's going on in the markets and how the markets move, okay? So we're going to look at a few different styles of trading. We're going we're gonna to look at value trading, okay? Value trading. You've all heard, buy low, sell high, right? We've all heard that. That's value trading, okay? Based on a lot of fundamentals of trading. All right, and we're going to compare that to trend trading, okay? Trend trading, when we're, you know, we have trends where we're setting uh, a lower high or a lower lows, and we have a series of those, and we develop a trend, okay? So a lot of traders believe that if there's a trend moving, as long as you trade in that direction, you're in pretty good shape, okay? So we're going to talk about value trading versus trend trading versus momentum trading. Momentum trading. Okay, that means that we're going to buy high, sell even higher. Now, why would somebody want to do that? Okay, we're going to talk about that. So, first thing we're going to, we're going to talk about is value trading. Value trading is trading undervalued assets, instruments, stocks, uh, futures, forex, whatever, based on fundamental analysis, okay, like something like uh, price to earnings ratio, okay. Um, traditionally, you're not going to use technical indicators for for value trading, like what we what most of us in today's markets use, um, but basically value traders are going to be looking to buy an asset at a discount to that asset's intrinsic value. Okay, they measure intrinsic value by taking a discount to future cash flows. If it's a stock price of a company is lower than the intrinsic value by what is known as like what the margin of safety. Usually, it's uh, it's at least thirty percent of the of the value. Then the company is considered undervalued in the market and worth trading. Okay, now you got to make sure you understand the distinction between undervalue and low value. Okay, there's that's two different things. Undervalued means that people aren't giving it its due. It's actually worth more than people are willing to pay for it. Low value is stocks that are probably on their way out, stocks or futures or, or whatever. They're on their way out. They're on the slide. They've, they're, they're, they've got a low value for a reason, okay? A lot of people get into 
they believe they're value trading by buying low value instruments, stocks or, or futures or whatever. When I say, I, I just kind of include all of that into an asset. Just call it an instrument or an asset, okay? So you've got these people that are, that are, that they see these low values and they go, oh, it's a bargain because last month it was worth $10 and today is worth $5. So it's a bargain. I'm going to buy it. Okay. Well, that, that doesn't mean that it's undervalued. It means that it's low valued potentially and that it's not worth having. All right. So most often these companies are, are uh, these, these companies that do this value trading. They rely really heavily on statistici statisticians, um, actuaries, macroeconomists, industry professionals, accountants, all these bean counters that have to do their job to value and spend a lot of time uh, putting value on a, an asset to determine if it's worth putting an investment in and then waiting to see if that uh, that investment pays off okay so they have a they do have a, a an intention on profiting on cheap stocks or undervalued assets which is really hard to do okay so we're we're oh I, doggone it I jumped ahead. Okay. I didn't know my scroll wheel would do that. I hit the scroll wheel. Okay, so that's that's value trading. There's a lot of value trading going on, but less and less all the time. We're going to come back to value trading in just a minute. Okay? But let's talk about trend trading. Okay, there's a, a lot of different styles of trend trading, okay? And, and many of you are probably uh, trading some of those styles. What is a trend? A trend is to establish what is a true trend. You need to establish on the way up, you need at least two higher highs and two lower highs. Both. You need them both to establish an end. Okay, so there's no trading until that trend is established. All right, so that means there's there's lots of waiting to make sure that you're trading with the trend. Okay, there's less of the fundamental analysis like in value trading or no fundamental analysis like in value trading. Okay, there is more or all technical analysis. Okay, the difference between technical analysis and fundamental analysis are that fundamental, we're studying the history of companies um, or the histories of an industry, um, and we're going to study, you know, the, like the the uh, the P and E and and all of these other uh, things that I'm really not very good at. Uh, but these people that are the bean counters just love this stuff and and they will value a company based on the fundamentals and this is the way investing and trading was done long time ago way before we had all of these electronic uh, devices so trend trading doesn't require that trend trading is temp uh, as most of the time these days might be using some of the fundamental analysis, but it's going to rely heavily on technical analysis. Okay. Now there's lots of, doggone it. There, how, I just, how did I, all these years, I just found out the middle wheel will move the, uh, the slide. So there's lots of different strategies to trading trend right there, there you know there's moving average strategies there's overbought oversold strategies there's trend line and chart patterns there's breakout there's all of these different strategies for trading trends and there's hundreds of them there's hundreds of them okay but 
by and large, a trend trader must rely on an established trend. Established trend. Not the beginning of a trend because they don't know it's a trend yet. Okay? The thing about trend trading is it requires a strong emotional and financial commitment regardless of the chosen time frame. All right? Traders are supposed to stay in their position until the trend has reversed. Although we know reversals happen at different at different times and different time frames, right? All right, so we're going to get back to each of these. Momentum trading. Now, this has been around for a while. It started catching on in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Coincidentally, that's when the electronic trading was was started taking it taking hold and really you know making a difference in the market remember in value trading buy low sell high is the theme the problem that the momentum traders have with that is that waiting for the market to reevaluate the value of the asset takes forever momentum traders don't want to take that long they pick assets that are already highly considered valuable with the hopes that they'll become just a little bit more valuable in the short term. Okay. That's why it's called momentum. Okay. Momentum trading, it's, it's increasing in value. It's getting way up there. It's showing a good, strong push in value. This is when momentum traders get interested. So they're taking advantage of the volatility that's going on in the markets. This is a of the I gotta quit rolling that mouse wheel. They're taking advantage of these short term positions uh, when it just zooms up and then selling it as soon and of course anything I say about up you can say in reverse because they put up or down okay buying or selling long or short either way okay but we're going to talk about up just to make it easy so as they as soon as they show signs of price and buyers weakening then they bail out, all right, and then and and market volatility is is like in waves, right? And so they bail out until the next crest of the next wave. So what they're what they're looking for, and not just looking for, but creating, is what's called investor herding. Okay. So they're leading the pack and anticipating that investors are going to follow. And they're going to follow because the pack leader has the biggest pot, right? They have the most assets there. They bought in that and they're going to push price up. So the herd, all of us, all of us retail traders, are going to typically follow the pack all right so this is called um, um, the trading herd or the investor herd and guess who gets to take advantage of the rest of the herd the leader of the pack right So that's that's essentially momentum trading, okay? Now, momentum. 
let's make sure we're all on the same page understanding the difference between momentum and velocity okay that can be very confusing to people and it's the same in physics as it is in trading okay momentum is a result of velocity it's not velocity okay in physics momentum is the mass multiplied by velocity so what is mass it's weight right think about a freight train versus a motorcycle they both go from a standing stop who's going to reach 100 miles an hour first Everybody knows the answer to that. The motorcycle is going to reach 100 miles an hour first. Who's going to go from 100 miles an hour to zero first? The motorcycle. Why is the tra freight train going to take so long? Momentum. Momentum, the momentum it has exceeded the train's ability to stop quickly. Okay? We all understand this is very basic physics that we understand on a, just intuitively. But for some reason, when we try to apply intuition and basics to trading, we kind of get all flustered. But it's the same. Now take trading. Let's take the mass. Okay, mass equals the number is the number of contracts currently being traded or available out there that are being traded. Okay, velocity. The rate at which price is moving. Okay, see see how see the thing here. Momentum traders are wanting to trade when the freight train has reached maximum speed. But not the motorcycle, because the motorcycle can stop in a heartbeat and turn the other way. Momentum traders understand that there's so much sentiment behind this, this move that we're having. There's so many traders. There or or big boys or whatever behind that are involved in this movement of price from one level to the next that it's almost impossible for it to stop because of the amount of force pushing price up. Okay. Now this is all relative to what's been previously going on in the markets, okay? Momentum traders don't care about a, a fixed amount of, uh, of volume or um, a fixed percentage of the market or a, or a fixed um, price level. Momentum traders are all looking for what's relative movements that are relative okay so the size of the move relative to what price has been doing okay so that so these momentum traders they see this trend okay they see the trend and momentum traders want to trade these levels inside this notice you know, this, this chart I pulled up here, this one that you're looking at now, was yesterday. Yesterday or day before. It depends on when I pulled this up. I didn't have to go very far to find a chart ex that showed exactly what I needed to show you. You go look and you'll find everything that has these levels. It's creepy how often this happens. When we're done today, go look. 
Go see if you can find a chart that, that looks like this. Almost any instrument, any time frame. Momentum traders are looking to capture these strong moves after these relatively low periods of time, uh, you know, these low interest could be something else. And they're looking for these temporary uh, uh, pushes in the market where the uh, momentum of price, where the sentiment is that Price is going to go up a little bit, but then all of a sudden a lot of people get involved and then the momentum traders jump in. Well, as soon as they jump in, everybody else goes, wait, what? What just happened? And then they start jumping in, right? So let's look a little bit more closely on what's going on here. Okay, this is, this is uh, number one, we, you, you see where price is channeling, right? This is, we see this all the time. Now, for you and me, what are we doing when we see this? What are we doing? We're sitting there. We don't have anything to do. If you're not in a trade, if you're in a trade, you're freaking out. You're probably stressed. You're probably going, oh, man, price is down. Oh, it's up. Oh, it's down. Oh, it's up. But if you're not in a trade, you're sitting there bored because nothing is happening, right? It appears nothing is happening. This could be an area of low interest where nobody really wants to trade, or it could be an area of accumulation and distribution that the other big boys, the you know, the hedge funds, the HFTs. They're buying or selling very quietly on very low volume. Trying to corner the market or trying to make their profits. And nothing's going on. But for you and me, there's nothing to do. We just sit there. And then suddenly we break out of this channel. Okay. It may be sudden, it may not be sudden, but we break out of the channel. Buying sentiment starts increasing, and it usually is with a, a lot of sudden bidding up of price, okay? And then momentum traders suddenly get triggered to buy up as much as they can, as fast as they can. And okay? what happens when, when that happens? This sudden shortage of available assets, because they've been buying them all up, starts driving prices even higher, right? This is supply and demand. You, keep, you always hear this is an auction system based on supply and demand. If there's lots of supply, that, that uh, there's more of the asset than people are willing to buy, that drives the price down. If there's more people willing to buy than there is of this particular asset, that drives the price up. Okay, make sure all of you that are trading understand that that's what's happening in the market. That's what makes it a market. Okay. So this sudden interest uh, and buying interest starts causing shortages and people that wanted to buy because they wanted to be involved in this flurry of buying suddenly can't buy anymore. There, there's nobody else selling. So what happens? Exhaustion starts to set in. Momentum traders are now very adept at identifying when this is. And they know just before this is when they start dumping off as much as they can. The last remaining buyers will buy up what they can 
and then that's it. Exhaustion has set in. Momentum traders will dump everything as fast as they can. All the buyers are gone. And suddenly, what's left is an oversupply. And that drives prices down. Does that give you any ideas? If you're paying attention and you've not already been doing this, maybe you've got an aha here. All right, so let's look real quick so you make sure you understand. We talked about value analysis. These are the guys that will value an industry or a stock or a future or, or a forex or whatever. And they'll and they'll put in a value and they'll figure out, they'll have this room full of very smart people. And they'll figure out the value of this asset. And they'll set and they'll decide at, at a certain level this this asset is undervalued. And they'll start trading it. What does that do? That starts moving price up, okay? Because they're starting to buy the available assets, which is to start moving price up. After a few up and downs along the way, a trend will develop. Okay, remember we have to have two higher highs or two higher lows, or both, or the reverse. And it develops a trend, right? So then the trend traders now can get in. Okay, so the value traders are going to start the trend. The trend traders are going to finally clue in and go, hey, here's a trend. It's time for me to get busy. Towards the end of this trend, the momentum traders are going to go, okay, it's time for me to jump in. All right, let's look at this carefully. So we've got a, 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 the beginnings of a new trend, right? We, so we've got something that's undervalued. So we're going to, and we're also looking at some, some channeling. <clears throat> whether it's sideways, slightly up, slightly down, it doesn't matter. But you can tell price is channeling. We've all, you've all traded enough to see when price is channeling. Slightly up, slightly down. So we're channeling here. Could be low interest, meaning nobody's wanting to trade this. Could be accumulation. Could be distribution. We're little guys. We don't know. And to be honest, it just doesn't matter to us because we're just waiting for something to happen to give us a signal that it's time to trade. Okay? Now, price starts to bump up. Somebody's going to make price move. Price starts to bump up. Momentum traders, as soon as they start seeing that there is buying sentiment, they're going to jump in and they're going to buy as much as they can. As long as there's more buying sentiment, even higher. Okay? So they're going to buy down here, even though price, price is high, higher than it's been. But they've identified that there is more buyers, even higher. So they're going to go ahead and and make a quick buy and a quick sell. This series, okay, so and then then we keep doing this, we will eventually form a trend, okay? So down here we're undervalued, down here undervalued. We set a new lower low or higher low. We set a new higher low, okay? Higher, higher low, higher low, higher low. So we have a trend. Okay, we've established a trend. At this point, 
for this time period, we are at or overvalued for what the market believes about price at this area. Okay. Next thing we know, we're back to channeling. We have the low interest, accumulation, distribution. We don't know. I don't care. Some people care. I don't care. We've got then a push of momentum where the momentum buyers or the momentum traders are buying here, selling here. We've reached a new crest in the wave. Remember I was talking about the wave? A new crest in the wave. We're at or overvalued. Drops back down. We do the whole thing over again, right? So you look at this and you say, okay, well, how can I participate in this? If this is what's going on, and I promise you, if you'll take all your indicators off of charts and put on a blank chart, I don't care what time frame, don't use one of the hybrid charts. Use a, a regular chart, a, a, a time-based chart. And all, all traders, all um, successful traders that I know use time involved in their trading. I know there are some, I don't want to get into that argument. I'll argue that point on Saturday. Um, but time is an exceptionally important part of trading. And if you remove it from trading, you're doing yourself a disservice. But anyway, look at any time-based chart, and you will see this repeated over and over and over again. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. But you'll see it all the time. So do I want to be a value trader? I don't know anything about doing fundamental analysis. I don't know when a trend is at the bottom. I don't know when to buy low. I don't have the temperament to trade a trend, to be a trend trader. You have to have nerves of steel and a big account to be a, a successful trend trader. And when I was trying to learn this trading thing, I had neither. So trend trading, although I tried it for many years and different styles of trend trading for many years, I failed miserably. So do I want to be a momentum trader? Yes, I'd love to be a momentum trader. Do I have the financial ability to be one of those guys? Not so much. I don't have hundreds of millions of dollars to move the market or even tens of millions, or even millions. <laughs> I can't move the market. I can't, by the nature of my own buying and selling, make price go from one level to the next. I can't do it. Not unless I'm trading in the middle of the night and it's me and the other guys. Maybe then I can. So, what's left for those of us trying hard to find an edge? We're really trying hard to find an edge. What's left? What about those little areas? What's about the other side of what the momentum traders are trading? Those little pullback areas before the low interest. Now, the momentum traders have zero interest in this. This is... The end result of when they're done. When they're done, this is what happens until they start again. It's not, you know, the smart money, the quants, the, the HFTs, the, the, the uh, momentum traders, they don't care about any of this. They've just finished up a round of trading and they're setting up the next round. Okay, so they don't care. So here's the deal. We, we, what we did, we just took, we, we looked at this, we got, okay, well, there's an opportunity. There's a huge opportunity. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to measure millions of historical swing high and lows. 
I'm going to collect all the data from that. I'm going to compare all the conditions. I'm going to find the similar conditions. And I'm going, to com uh, <clears throat> I'm going to apply the comparisons to each of those conditions to anticipate when that's about to happen. That, I decided, there's still an edge out there for those us guys. There's still an edge that we can exploit. It's kind of hidden. You just got to pay attention. So I I looked at this data and I analyzed all this data and I figured out that this, these momentum traders by buying in here cause a kind of an unnatural increase in buying sentiment. Okay, so maybe there was nothing going on in here, right? But ultimately they start buying in here. And everybody's like, oh, wait, what? Price is going up? Well, I need to get in on that and start driving price up. And before all of these other people that go, oh, wait, I need to get in on that, they're still getting in on it about the time that the momentum traders are selling to all of those people that were a little late to the game. They're like, oh, sure, no problem. I'll sell it to you. So all of the, this is done is bid up price to the point where all of the available assets are gone. Well, what happens when there's no more assets but there's still demand? Momentum, okay? That's the momentum. That's the freight train. All of the available assets got sold and bought right in here. Yet, there's people still trying to buy. Momentum has caused price to continue up. This freight train. We're trying to stop it, but it's still going up. Until it can't anymore. There's no buyers up here. An exhaustion has set in. No more buyers. Exhaustion has set in. Who's going who's gonna to take control at this point? It's pretty simple, right? Now, remember that, and I want you to make sure you understand, this move is relative to what's going on here. These buys only, they were only concerned about what's going on here. They don't care about price. They don't care about volume. They only care about what was going on here. Okay? So when you see this, this is what's going on. This is what it looks like to us. Us. Traders in the trade room. Us bunt traders, second brain traders. This is what this looks like. Hmm. Pretty simple, huh? Big push up. Exhaustion. Momentum buyers. Price is exhausted. We have uh, an indicator here suggesting that the buying and selling action is the sellers are taking over from the buyers. Open of this bar, we have this, uh, what's called a rock star, and we would sell it here, bam. Okay, that's what it looks like to us. We have that, we turn it into that. All right, so here it is on a chart. Uh, yeah, let me do this, let me pull this up. This is what it looks like on a trading chart. So we have a speed tick, pullback alert. These are our indicators that I'm going to tell you more about. We don't have time today. I'm going to tell you more about these on Saturday. This indicator tells us something very specific about this bar. 
this indicator tells us something specific is going on inside this bar. The type of volume, the buying and selling volume. This indicator tells us that we have a rock star trade set up on the open of this bar. Okay. Now, knowing that, here's a good, another real easy to example, easy to understand example here. Speed tick on this bar, rock bar, rock star. This prints. I'll show you this in a minute. This prints on the open of this bar. Okay. So here's this this trading chart. If you're watching this on video, it's going to be real easy for you to stop the video and uh, go through this. And I and I think each of you that are watching are here in the event today should watch this video and understand what's going on here. Notice the confluence of these indicators before price does something. We have a speed tick, rock star. Price jumps up. Okay, just because we have an indicator doesn't mean we have a trade setup. But here we have a trade. We had two trade setups. Boom, boom. Okay, here we have a trade setup. Oops, went too far. Beautiful trade setup. Oversold condition, speed tick, rock star, price jumps. Okay. On Saturday, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of this. A lot of confluence here, price drops. Exactly what we expected. Speed tick, rock star, price takes off. Speed tick, rock star, price drops. Speed ticks, rock star, price takes off. Speed tick, rock star, price jumps, uh, drops. This is, uh, I'm not reading the chat. This is YM from yesterday or day before. Okay, the YM. The futures instrument, YM. It does not always win. Speed tick, rock star, lost. This was a loser right here. Followed by a big winner. Followed by another big winner. Okay. Now, so let's see it live. Let's see it in action. This is our trade room a few days ago. These are the uh, trade room videos. And I'm just going to scroll through this. And this is a video that we put out in, on our YouTube channel. Um, go to, and you can go to our YouTube channel. This is the uh, the URL for this video. Feel free to watch it. But I'm going to uh, play this. I don't even remember which one this is. But I'm just going to play this. And you can see what it's like in our trade room. And, and see exactly what I just showed you is happening. All right, so we add this to the video for a lot of reasons. We trade for five ticks, hard target five ticks. This is uh, up here. This is our trade room, the people in the trade room that took the trade. Um, I trade for hard target five ticks. A lot of people are like, five ticks? You can't make any money at five ticks. The thing is, is you get good at doing something really small. This real, this little edge that I just showed you that's available to us. This little edge, you get really good at it, and you start adding up the the uh, you start adding lots to your trades. And once you get really good at it, you know you're making 150 bucks a trade. Not too bad. Yeah. 
This is a, uh, what instrument was that? This was the 6E, so 625 a, a trade. You'll notice, pay attention to when the indicators print. Ah, uh, this one's hard to see. It had already printed. Let me go to another one. All right, here's, here's one. Watch this. Watch this. See when that printed? See when the rock star printed? Yeah, there was still some momentum left. This is not a crystal ball. But it does. We, we have identified an area where we have an edge. So we're looking for a hard target plus five ticks. Now, beyond plus five, we're not entirely sure what's going to happen. But we have a real tight sweet spot at plus five. All right. So you see a lot of times people come in the trade room and and our traders basically say instead of saying, hey, I won that trade. Woohoo. They type in plus five. That's all they need to do. And everybody knows they just they just won that trade and they hit their hard target of plus five. You get good at it. You do it with a single contract. You grow your account a little bit and then you do two lots. And you do that for a while and you grow your account a little bit and you do three lots. You don't have to learn a lot of different things. You keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. All right. I can show you more of that on Saturday. We're starting to run out of time today. Now, so you see these indicators, right? You see all this stuff on the charts. You see these little dots and, and little lightning bolts and flashes and arrows and stuff and you go hmm is that a trade setup now any other trading system you might have you might be doing order flow you might be doing support and resistance you might be doing trend and breakout um you know elliott wave i don't know there's so many different ways of of trading There's a good chance you, you may have get into a trade and go, oh, man, hmm, I wonder if that was a good trade setup. Now, if one, if you have one data source, one source of information, whether it's an Elliott wave or reading candlesticks or, uh, or um, order flow, or which is could be the same thing, um, or any any number of different trading systems. You have one source of data suggesting that you have a potentially good trade setup. So you might look at it and go, yeah, that trade setup says, yeah, I think we might have a or it's a, a pretty accurate either one. Pretty actress or a <laughs> something, some some uh, fun uh, or uh, technical trade indicator that says, yeah, that might be a good trade setup. What you really need, though, is a lot of different non-correlated data that suggests that you have a good trade setup. Okay, so this is a non-correlated group of people. I mean, they, they don't know each other. They have different backgrounds, different life experiences. But they all strongly agree on something that something is about to happen. If you were having to make a decision on something, would that help you make the decision? Or would that help you make the decision? on whether it was a good idea and it had a high probability. This is many different angles of looking at the same problem. And do you find it more credible that looking at a problem from several different angles and they all agree 
versus one angle. Okay. So here's our here's what we trade every day. We're looking for lots, and this is called confluence, lots of agreement that we have an area of confluence where price is likely to be stopping and turning. Okay, we have also an, a we have an, a new indicator that has kind of taken us by storm called the rock star. We've combined a lot of these confluences and put them into a single indicator. So when we have confluence, the rock star, and you saw that on that, that chart that I showed you with the stars on it, that's our new rock star. That's the thing that's gotten people so excited lately. Talk about more about that on Saturday. In fact, we have a rock star trade set up that under the right conditions, you trade on the open of this bar. And if you're lucky, you can get a trade in as if price like opens here and jumps, then you get in up here. You don't have to be lucky. You can maybe just be good. And then as soon as price drops, you start hitting our sweet spot. You start taking profits. Okay. Tell you how to do that on Saturday. Now, if you are registered for this event, you are already registered for Saturday. It's going to happen in this same room. Okay? So you already have the link. We'll send you an email also. If you're watching this on video and you don't, are not registered, do it right here. See this on the left hand side. Send us an email and we'll get you registered. Okay? We have a, uh, a lounge every Wednesday. We meet with our VIPs in the VIP lounge. And uh, we have a meeting called our AHA Moments. So I decided to use the VIP lounge for this special offer for you guys. We're going to give you a blanket offer. Uh, a lot of We're having a lot of people suddenly... Um, buying our indicators off the website f to use with their trending system. We are not trend traders. We are pullback traders. However, our indicators have been proven to be very beneficial for trend traders. And so we've got a lot of people using them for scaling on their trends. Okay. If you want to get one of our indicators, we've got a store-wide discount. Go in, use the TradeBrain uh, coupon code, and get anything as much as you want. Fill up your cart, get 10% off, okay? If you're looking to do more of the type of trading that we do, the pullback trades, find that big opportunity, we've got a, a, a bundle package for you called our VIP bundle package. It's basically the one and done. There's nothing else to buy ever. You buy in one time, you're done, okay? That covers... Full ownership of all trade room indicators. Full ownership of all future trade room indicators. So we've just we've got a new one that we just released that all the VIPs just got for free. You got um, a full ownership or free subscription to our essential add-on suite, which is coming out very soon, and that's and, and our VIPs already have have it. Um, but it's a uh, it, it enhances the NinjaTrader user experience. Has lots of neat tools in it. Okay, um, if you've seen if you use Market Replay or you've seen the website Market Replay Data Data uh, Data.com, um, that downloader there's a subscription fee. If you're a VIP, you get it for free. You get unlimited fast forward training program, which is our self directed training program. Um, we have weekly um, uh, mentoring uh, sessions in our in this lounge. This picture that you saw. Background. This is our VIP lounge, um, and this is where we meet every Wednesday at 12:15. And I talked to you about the ahas that I had 
that turned my trading around. I try to get you to understand more what it is to be a real trader than than it is to just teach you how to trade. Okay, so if you if you understand if you know the Karate Kid, you know the story of the Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi had to teach Daniel the basics first. That whole thing about wax on, wax off, and paint the fence. That was all giving him a foundation from which to learn the things that he needed to know. And that's what we do in the AHA sessions. So we give you unlimited trade room access. We, give you, we have a, a separate link for our VIPs for technical support that shoots them right to the front of the line. We have our daily trade room video replay. So if you have to work at night or work during the day, then at night you can watch what happened in the trade room. Um, remote installation and setup. And all of that is a, a package that we have on the website for 5250. We're going to do it on special for this event uh, for only 4700 now. Had a lot of interest. We have a lot of emails lately of people that are saying, oh, will you have a special coming up soon? Okay. So for the first five of you today, just the first five, we'll, we're going to do 4200 uh, $4, And as soon as we hit five, we'll take the, the special off. It's on the website now. Okay. That's this page down here. As soon as we hit five, It'll go to 4700 and you'll see that you're paying 4700 not 4200 okay? So it'll be automatic. It's all set up on the website. So the sooner the better. So if somebody else doesn't get it, you want to, and, and you're thinking about it. If you think about it, you're going to end up paying 47 uh, or if you have to take a lot of time or whatever. Um, don't forget that PayPal has a bill me later option. I think it's six months to pay. Uh, a lot of our people like to take advantage of this PayPal offer because it gives you a lot of time to learn about what we're doing, to learn the setups, to learn about the indicators, to be in the trade room, to watch the videos, to do the fast forward program. You've got a lot of time before you have to start making payments to PayPal. Okay, so hopefully you can get up to speed before then. But this is a very popular option. All right, I am now, I have no idea going on in the chat, but I just removed the little cover. I just, I had it. Uh, Heinz, we'll do that Saturday. Going to do it Saturday and we'll take snippets of the video uh, and, and make it available. Now, <clears throat> I, Heinz, did you look at the uh, online documentation? There, I did put some documentation for for that on uh, yesterday. Yeah, send Connor an email. Um, his email address is uh, ooh, covered up. All right. Any other questions? If you asked a question and it didn't get answered, now's the time. Yes, Phil. That's an interesting question, Phil. I have not tra the E mini is in our trade room, okay? And it's been there for a very. It's been there from the beginning. And we leave it there because there are a lot of people that believe that their best trading opportunities are in the ES, okay? So we want people to come check us out and see what we're doing because they're going to go, oh, well, I just trade the E-mini, so I'm going to go in the trade room and I'm going to see what they're doing. And then 
they sit there and they stare at the E-mini while we're trading the crap out of the CL and the GC and the YM and the NQ and the 6E, and they're going, huh, wow, the E-mini's not really moving very well, but all these other ones are trading like crazy. Maybe I ought to look at some of these other ones. Okay, so that's why we have the E-mini in the room. That being said, and I talked about it earlier today in the trade room, the E-mini has been moving much than it has over the last couple of years. In fact, I took my first ES trade today, probably in two months, because of it's moving so much better. So, maximum number of contracts I have traded makes no difference to anybody whatsoever other than your curiosity. And I'm not here for that. The reason I don't share what I do or what I trade is because it's unrealistic for you to expect to do the same. If I say I traded 50 eBay contracts, you'd be thinking, oh, I'm going to try to trade because this guy knows what he's doing. He's been doing it a long time. He trades 50 E-minis. That sounds like a good idea. Okay? I don't think it's a good idea for anybody to trade as many contracts as I do until they have the experience that I have. Until they've grown their trading account from what mine was, which was almost to the point where it was untradeable because I didn't have enough in it to, for margins for a single trade. So that's how terrible my account was before things turned around. I could trade one contract of an N or YM and that was it. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm the kind of guy that can move the the ES. Yeah, that's me, all right. <laughs> Not so much. I'm a little guy. All right. We've actually gone about 15 minutes over the intended for this event. And I apologize if I've kept you guys longer. We are going to go over a lot of the details on Saturday. We, we generally just don't have enough time in these events to do everything that needs to be done to, so that you understand what it is that I'm explaining to you. I can give you a general overview in an hour and then specifics in the next hour. But nobody wants to sit through a two-hour event. So we break it up. So we're going to break it up uh, and we're going to do the, the nitty gritty details on Saturday and answer lots of questions on Saturday. So I want to thank you all for coming. I really hope to see every one of you on Saturday. Yes, we will have a recording on Saturday. If you don't, if you can't make it, which I certainly understand. If you're registered, you will get it on. You will get a link in your email to the video. Yep, you will get a link almost as soon as it's done. See, when I'm done on Saturday, I take off. I leave. I go run, I go work out, go to dinner, whatever. Connor, on the other hand. <laughs> has to stay and work because he has to render the video and put it all together and put the email together and send it. So two hours after I'm gone having fun, <laughs> he's, still, he's still here working, making sure that you guys get the video. All right. That's it. I hope this was informative for you guys. I hope it was enlightening. I hope you understand better what's happening in the markets. Okay. One of the things that makes us 
better traders is understanding what it is that we're seeing in the markets. Okay, what it is that's happening? How people people are reacting? How the hedge funds or the big boys or the quants are acting and how we're reacting to them. All of that understanding gives you an edge. Okay. So I hope this was beneficial for you guys and we'll expand on it more on Saturday. Okay. All right, everybody have a great rest of your evening and we'll see you all very soon.